Genesis 18. Um, <clears throat> this is the uh, this is the chapter where Abraham gets a special visitation from three Jehovah's Witness. Well, they actually were witnesses for Jehovah God. <clears throat> One of them was a little bit more special than the other ones. We'll find that out in a little bit. Um, I asked this question, I think, last week. If you think that you had an angel um, sort of... Um, help you in a situation, God shall give his angels charge over thee, and I think a lot of you raised your hands. Um, let me ask this, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, I'm not trying to, because I, I think it's real, but who in here thinks they have seen a spirit of some kind? Okay. Several of you. And I would, I would ask if it was what you think was an evil spirit. The presence, the physical appearance of an evil spirit. Do you think it's possible that people could see that? Okay. That it's actually in your Bible. And uh, I'll show you where in just a little bit. Um, but that, that subject has, uh, I won't say I've studied it all my life, but, uh, I've always, uh, I've always considered the fact whether or not things like the, um, the Amityville horror, if you remember back from the seventies that took place, um, people seeing strange sightings of different things around the country, people believing that certain spirits inhabited certain places in the woods. Stories like that have been told literally for thousands of years. European, European history is full of the appearances of different things. There's one uh, a British, they call them folklores, but there was a British uh, story of, um, he was called by different names, Jack on the Lawn, Jumping Jack. Jack is a common term for like a dude, I guess, in America. Um, but a man, a humanoid type figure, although the skin was a little bit different, and the man could leap over high walls. He could run away very quickly, things like that. Those stories have been told throughout the centuries. Um, stories of, believe it or not, werewolves. I personally believe that they have a basis in, a possible basis in reality. <clears throat> because when you study, um, when you study the spiritual realm in the Bible, you understand that several of these angelic beings, either good or bad, they don't all look like me and you. Um, in the in this case of Ezekiel chapter one, when Ezekiel sees the cherubs that. Um, are part of the chariot of God, they take on four different appearances. That of an eagle, that of an ox, uh, that of a lion, and uh, then one of a man. What, one of David's mighty men, the Bible says that he fought two lion-like men. 
and beat them both. Got them. Got them good. We know that those same men fought Goliath's four brothers. And um, Ishbibinab was one of them. Saph was another of them. I can't remember the other one. They had six fingers on each hand, six fingers, six toes on each foot. Uh, men of great stature, the Bible says, and was able to... Uh, there was an Egyptian who was of high stature that fought with a... Um, I don't know what they call it. It, it, uh, it was, I guess, a spear. And David's mighty man walked up with a stick and plucked that spear out of that giant's hand and killed him with his own spear. I thought that, that is one of my favorite stories. Anytime God gets these guys with their own weapons, to me, that's funny. Shot with his own gun, in other words. Uh, and then we're going to read a story out of the book of Job where one of Job's friends saw a ghost. What they used to call a, a haint, meaning haunt. Um, houses can be haunted. Houses can be the domain of evil spirits. The book of Revelation bears that out. Isaiah 13 bears that out. Isaiah 34 bears that out. And many other places in the Bible. So yeah, I believe these things are possible. And uh, maybe we'll spend some time uh, looking into what, what would it take to get, why, why would certain creatures, certain spirits live maybe on certain mountains? Or my, why would they dwell in, in wooded areas? Or why would they live maybe in a certain field or, or a certain house for that matter? Why would they do that? Uh, we start out again this, this uh, tonight, the same way we did last Sunday night. We're going to be studying Genesis 18. But Hebrews 13, to be, be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares, which literally means that angels will make appearances in our world. They will make themselves seen. Um, and a couple things that he's saying here is that, number one, you may or may not be able to detect whether or not this is an angel. Okay, now I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't said this, um, but I have. I remember telling a couple stories about being stuck with our van out on the interstate, full of youth camp kids, and the the belt, the serpentine belt, came off my car, and we made it into a gas station, and just two guys were there. And they jumped right in and they got their tools out and they put that, that's hard to do. They put that serpentine belt right on and said, you're good to go. And then never saw them again. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was coming up uh, off of Mill Street here, getting on American Legion Drive. And I got too close to that new curb they put in and hit, hit a guy's mailbox. He's the guy I did the good deed anyway. Uh, but it busted my tire and I wasn't sure how bad it was till I went down here to pick up Caleb. And I mean, that tire's just mangled. A guy popped in out of nowhere and said, here, let me fix that for you. And in two minutes, he had that car jacked up, that tire changed and was gone. I tried to pay him. He said, no, thanks. I don't know who he was. So you may have dealt with these and not known it. It's possible, I think, if they wanted you to know it, that you might know it. I think, I think the reverse is also possible. I think evil spirits can, at will, make their presence seen, heard, uh, felt. I believe that. And especially maybe by saints, people who are saved and devils know it. When a saved person comes around, remember, you have the living God in you and they always know it. And so there may be things that take place that you wonder what's going on. And it could very well be a spirit acting up in your presence because they don't like you. 
They don't like who's in you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And get what he said. And by the way, let me, let me assure you of this. The devil does not live in hell. He does not live in hell. Okay? He is on this earth walking about to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He may or may not have a pitchfork in his hand. Like you see on deviled ham packages, all right? So anyway, Genesis 18. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that. I think it was... Um, Oh, who wrote, it was a poem, um, was it Faust maybe, I don't know, Faust, okay, the Lord, yeah, Mephisto, okay, the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, bowed himself toward the ground, and said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts after that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, so do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes upon the hearth. And I can just hear Sarah saying, you don't need to tell me how to make cakes. Okay? And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man. And he hastily dressed it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And we'll get into the rest of the story a little bit later on. Let's pray. Father, we ask your blessings uh, on your word tonight. Bless our church. And Father, just th I thank you, God, for what you do and how you work. Lord, I love you and I love this church. And Father, I have never in my lifetime have I ever seen. And I know, God, that you've done wonderful things in churches all throughout the years. Uh, but Father, with my eyes, have I not seen you do the things that you are doing, have done through this church. Lord, I am blessed. I am blessed just to be a part of it. So Father, continue to bless this church. Bless your people, both here, there, and around the world. And let us, Father, please, Father, let us keep being a blessing to the people of your kingdom to your kingdom. Let us bring honor and glory to your name and not shame to the cause of Christ. And Lord, just bless your word tonight. Give us, give us uh, eyes to see the spiritual world that we cannot see with our human eyes. Help us to see them by faith. Help us to understand these things by faith. And to just trust you, Lord, that these principalities and rulers of darkness that you say we wrestle against, we really are wrestling against them. And they're real. In fact, they're more real than any earthly enemy we would ever face. And they're more dangerous than any earthly enemy that we would ever face. So, Lord, just open our eyes and teach us, Father, how things work on both sides of the field of battle. And show us, Father, what, would, what our part would be, uh, what our role should be in helping you fight this battle. Father, we are yours, we're your soldiers, your servants, and we're glad to do it, Father. We love you and we trust you. Bless your word in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. Uh, we read this, uh, we looked in Judges, the, the angel that appeared uh, unto Gideon, I'm not going to go back into that. Uh, these same two angels that were here meeting with uh, Abraham in the plains of Mamre, uh, they're the same two angels that ended up going to visit Lot and to rescue Lot and his family out of Sodom. They were the ones, they were the ones that God was going to use to carry out the judgment uh, somehow, some way of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then um, I don't remember if we got into 
Um, Samuel, or uh, the, the witch of Endor. Do you remember if we got that far last week? Let's, let's turn to Bibles, 1 Samuel 28. And we'll just kind of get a, a glimpse of, of this particular spirit or these spirits. There was actually a group of them that this woman, we call her the witch of Endor. The character of Endora on Bewitched was named after her. Uh, so was the moon in the second Star Wars movie, or the third one, Ewoks, the, e the, the Ewoks that lived there, the little midget guys, furry creatures, lived there, little Bigfoots, I call them, uh, the little Bigfoots that lived on there, the moon was called Endor, and um, George Lucas knew what he was, he knew what he was doing, he knew where the name came from, I believe. And because uh, I, I don't think he just put letters together and made up a word. I think he either knew what he was doing or was being led to do what he was doing. But first Samuel 28. Saul goes because Saul, God has told God has told Saul, I'm not talking to you ever again. I'm not talking to you through prophet, which tells me it could not have been Samuel. Samuel was a prophet. God said, I'm not talking to you through the prophets. I'm not talking to you by Urim and Thummim. And I'm not, ta I'm not talking to you by visions. I'm not saying, I, my, you rejected my word, so I'm not giving you my word. Period. The end. I'm done with you. And I'm going to let you fall. So, Saul has no choice in his eyes, but to seek out someone who can divine the future. Someone who can predict what is going to happen now let me throw something at you that i believe is related a lot of science in the 20th and 21st century in my opinion if you look at the huge advancements in science in the 20th and 21st centuries there, I believe that that science was inspired science. Um, Werner von Braun, who worked with NASA, he, he came to America, pro, uh, Operation Paperclip. He was a German rocket scientist that helped Adolf Hitler build these weapons, a rocket that was going to fly to New York and Washington, D.C., um, once Von Braun came to America, started working for the Americans and they started building rockets. He supervised the, the, uh, the Mercury program, Gemini program, the Saturn V rocket, the biggest rocket ever built to launch man for peacetime efforts. They asked Werner Von Braun, how did the German scientists get so advanced technology in sh that little a time. And he said, we had help. We had outside help. And what he meant by that was they were gaining knowledge from spirits. Dr. Francis Crick, one of the scientists responsible for determining the, the general makeup and chemical makeup of DNA, cheated. Because he was friends with Aldous Huxley, who was experimenting with LSD. And Crick, Huxley told Crick exactly how much LSD to take, not to put him into a full-blown, I'm going to jump off a building because I can fly LSD trip, but take just enough. Huxley wrote a book called The Door. And he believed that there was a door in human beings' minds that was shut that if we could get that door open, it would open us up to a wealth of knowledge that man cannot attain to without it. Right now, um, all of your um, Silicon Valley companies and even your Texas computer companies, the research scientists working for those companies, at times, they will use small amounts of LSD to, to get inspiration, to, sol to help solve problems, that they're having with the newest technology, Steve Jobs was meditating to get his ideas.
So whether you meditate or you use drugs, all, the, all you're doing is cheating to bypass and get that door open. And Francis Crick admitted years later that he was using small amounts of LSD and that helped him visualize something that looked like two serpents intertwined together to make what DNA looks like. True story. So there's no doubt in my mind that it's done. Just as the Holy Spirit leads and guides us, showing us the right way to go and what to do and what decisions to make and so on, I believe the other side inspires their people as well. The reason why I say that is, um, when Lisa and I were coming home from camp, uh, you know, the, the wreck that we passed going down there held us up all that time. Well, not too far from that same spot, way out in the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden traffic slows down on Interstate 44. And we're not, we're not going anywhere. So I pull out my Google Map um, app on my phone and I look to see where we are. And, you know, Google Maps will draw a red line on a road where there's a traffic jam. And a yellow line to show you where it's kind of slowing down or whatever. And I looked on there to see that, you know, it, it wasn't going to take too long to get through this because it, it wasn't very long on the map. When we pulled up to the scene, it was just a pickup truck that had run off into the median. And no first responders were there except uh, high, a state patrolman had just passed us to pull up to the scene. He was the first one there. Now, there are no ca traffic cameras in that area. The highway patrolman was the first on the scene and he got there about the same time we did. My question is, how did Google know that there was an accident in that spot? AI, artificial intelligence. Google has an app probably on most people's phones, even if it's an iPhone. You have Google Maps on your phones because Apple Maps doesn't work. Google has access to your phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you gave them access to your phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they detected... Probably, first of all, they, they picked up on a 911 call saying there was an accident at a certain spot. Then Google Maps, their artificial intelligence, started noticing cars because of the GPS data traveling at five miles an hour next to this, at this certain location. And then building for us a red line to show us how far back people were traveling at that speed, at that location. In other words, no one had to call Google to report it. They knew it automatically. Now that kind of artificial intelligence telling us in real time what's happening, there is going to be, and it's already happening, a shift in what artificial intelligence will be able to do. Meaning that you're going to get up one day and you're going to be looking into your Google mirror that tells you what's going on in the news and gives you the weather. And your Google mirror is going to say to you, we advise you to take a different route to work today because we predict in an hour's time there will be a traffic jam at such and such location and we know you usually take that route. It will then get into predictive intelligence, meaning it will have the ability to prophesy and foresee the future. That's a God doing that. Now, if you don't think I'm right, let's wait five years and see if it doesn't happen or we start seeing it happen everywhere do you think that artificial intelligence do you think these computers will be able to predict when someone might get killed what do people who are going to kill somebody do talk about it your phone is listening your tv is listening because and because your remote is voice activated and it's on all the time listening to you we got something from our insurance company 
John, there's supposed to be some kind of water detection devices that they want us to hook to somebody's smartphone here. Uh-uh. But it's, it's the insurance company. They may make us, or they'll say, we won't cover you. It's, and that's what it's coming to. It's coming. So, the woman in 1 Samuel 28... By the way, what was witchcraft a hundred years ago is technology now. If you could go back a hundred years with just a cell phone and it not even being used as a cell phone and show people a hundred years ago you doing this and pulling up apps and that burn you at stake for a witch. Okay? First Samuel twenty eight eleven. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Now, Saul could not see them. But for some reason, this woman, who probably had seen them before, was used to seeing them. They let themselves be known to her. She saw them coming where? They came up out of the earth. Now these are not the ones in prison that we know of that are in, being held in the lower parts of the earth. If they were in prison, they would still, they'd still be down there. Apparently these gods live under the earth. There are stories, current ones, and old stories of certain caves that people won't go in. I ain't going in that cave. I was in there one time. I heard voices. I got out of there. Okay? Mystery cults used to meet in caves and caverns of the earth to get in contact with whatever gods or devils they wanted to get in contact with. This has been done for thousands of years. So there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that there are spirits under the earth. This is where they came from. God's coming up out of the earth. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up and he's covered with a mantle. Incidentally, there is a tarot card called the hermit. Tarot card is used for divination. And I don't remember exactly what the hermit represents. He's a, like a guardian of the mystery knowledge or something like that he holds a lantern in his hand the lantern is supposed to be that makes him a lucifer by the way he's a light bearer okay and i believe that's where they got that image from but he has a mantle he's covered he's covered himself and saul perceived that it was samuel and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself wrong thing to do saul was bow to a devil but that's exactly what he's doing this is a familiar spirit and it's a familiar spirit because it looked as if it were Samuel. It spoke as if it were Samuel. And it was able to predict a future that I believe either the devil had some knowledge of what was going to happen or the gods themselves were going to orchestrate the death of Saul to make it happen. Either way. Now there was one thing that I could see that this uh, familiar spirit was wrong on. Because the familiar spirit told Saul that all of his sons would be killed, but that didn't happen. Some of Saul's sons were killed, but not all of them were killed. So he was wrong on one spot. That tells me he's not Samuel. Okay? And later on, the Bible says that Saul died for rejecting the word of the Lord and... For going to a familiar spirit and inquiring of it. So God himself said that this is a familiar spirit and it's not Samuel. So what you have is, you have people, they call themselves fortune tellers, psychics. Some of these TV psychics, they're a bunch, they can do fake things. They can cold read people like mentalists do. That was one of my favorite shows, by the way. It was a guy who used to act like he was a psychic, but... His dad raised him up in a circus reading people and getting information from them and then getting, siphoning large amounts of money out of them. 
And, and he went around saying there's no such thing as this. Well, I believe there is. And I believe that some people will summon a familiar spirit. It could look like your Uncle David or your Uncle Charlie. And he does know where all the money's hid. And he knows things about your family that nobody else is supposed to know. They know these things. Why? Because they're around earthlings. They hear us. They see us. They can see us anywhere we are. They can learn things about us. And then they can pass that information on. To me, that's, that's just a simple trick is what it is. God said specifically, do not inquire of a familiar spirit or one who has a familiar spirit. God said, stay away from, do not call the psychic hotline. Number one, they're going to bilk you for thousands of dollars. Don't go see them. You don't need them. What you need is prayer and a Bible. And God will show you. Amen. Now turn to Job chapter four. This is in an interesting story. One of Job's friends, uh, Eliphaz the Temanite, saw a ghost. Job 4, verse 12. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and mine ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falleth on men. Do you believe that devils can access your dreams? You believe that, Emily? I do too. I do too, especially the dream I had about a month and a half ago. There was no doubt in my mind that a devil was accessing my dream. Not a doubt in my mind. My wife heard me crying out. I asked her the next morning, I said, did you hear me talking in my sleep? She said, yeah. And I said, what did you hear? She said, you said, who are you? And I'd, I was asking that probably about three times. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I could not see a face. Um, but it was a devil. And it was real weird because I could, in my dream, I could feel flesh mingled with darkness the body of this particular devil had darkness in it and i could feel the darkness that is weird okay now look at this verse 14 fear came upon me and trembling which made all my bones to shake then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It would yours too. It stood still. But I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence. And I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just? than God shall a man be more pure than his maker behold he put no trust in his servants and his angels he charged with folly how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay whose foundation is in the we need uh, Boris Karloff reading this how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Doth not their excellency which is in them go away. They die even without wisdom. Now let me ask you a question. Was this a good spirit or do you believe it was an evil spirit let's look at this again verse 15 a spirit passed before my face the hair of my flesh stood up 
It stood still, but I could not discern, discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes, and there was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? What do you think, Megan? Evil? What do you think, John? What do you think, Alicia? Is it the little boy with... Okay. Gary, what do you think? Evil spirit. Todd, what do you think? Evil spirit. I believe it was. Yeah, and let's, let's look at the context. Let's, let's look at what's going on here. Satan is testing Job. And he's wanting to prove that Job serves God for selfish reasons. Remember, Satan is the tempter, right? And he doesn't act alone. He has to have an army of devils because he cannot, Satan cannot be everywhere at once. So he has a network of his angels plus, I believe, a network of technology. Okay? The monitoring system that is all around this world with our phones, our watches, security cameras everywhere that are accessible. Now they want to sense what? The water in our building? Really? I'm not buying it. Okay? Since the devil cannot see everything, he needs access to something that can see everything. Thing. And I just, I have no doubt whatsoever that the technological, listen, I mean, think about it. The Wright brothers flew in what year? 19, 1907, 1901. We had only been flying 60 years and we're landing on the moon. Are you kidding me? There is no doubt in my mind. But that's all spirit led. So yes, I think this is an evil spirit. And I think, see, we know that Eliphaz and all of the other friends of Job were there to get Job to curse God and die and admit his sins, which Job didn't do anything wrong. And he certainly wasn't going to curse God. Satan wanted to win this thing and he used, he went against Job twice. And now Job stood his ground. And so the devil sends his three friends, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, to try to convince him, forget about God. God's already caught you in a sin. And, you, and, and here this friend of Job, all of a sudden, hears from a spirit in a dream, these exact words saying something like to Job, what? You think you're something special with God? God can't even trust his own angels. He charged them with folly. And I believe that's the angels that came in in Genesis 6 and after the flood made it and married the human women and had the giants. So he said, God doesn't even trust the angels anymore. Much less mortal man. So Eliphaz, the, the Temanite, he's not even telling what he thinks. He's telling what a spirit told him to say. And I think it was an evil spirit. Okay? That's creepy. So imagine. How many movie scripts do you think were written with the aid of spirits? It's Hollyweird. Yeah. Um, how many songs that Led Zeppelin wrote do you think were written by? Uh, which one of the guys bought Crowley's house, the Bullskine house? Uh, Jimmy, Page. Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page bought Aleister Crowley's mansion along Loch Ness specifically because it was oriented for Crowley to do rituals. Is that's, I think that's where Crowley got in touch with Lamb, the big alien-headed. This guy looked, and all the way back in the early 1900s, this alien looks like, or this spirit looks like an alien, a gray alien. 
Huh? From the pyramid? Okay. David, my esoteric consultant here. Hey, everybody's got a past that can contribute, all right? That's what we're all here to do. Foiling the day. We, got to, we, we know his tactics, right? But think about the number of songs that are sang that are inspired by devils. Think about the number of movie scripts, TV scripts. Listen. Christian music. Good grief. We were looking at a car for Caleb yesterday out on Z Highway across from Victory Christian. And they were having some kind of shindig at their church last night. And the music coming out of that place was satanic. There is no doubt in my mind. All you got to do is, I can't describe it, but if you heard it, you would go, yep, that's satanic. Okay. Movies, TV shows, um, books, novels. Uh, guess what I read last night? Thor, the god in the Marvel comics. Um, Manly Hall wrote in the Secret Teachings of All Ages, he calls Thor the prince of the power of the air. I'm not, I'll show you the, I'll show you the quote probably this week. Thor is the prince of the power of the air. And Manly Hall was saying that's a good thing. He's a, he's a model for us to follow. He's the prince of the power of the air. And I'm going, that's the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Crazy. And he's supposed to be the good guy. He's the guardian of this earth, right? That's evil. It's evil people. Okay. But that's what they're up to. Uh, the control that spirits or angels have over man. Job chapter nine, verse chapter one, verse verses nine through twelve. Then Satan answered and said, "Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face." And the Lord said unto Satan, "Behold, all that he hath is in thy power." Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And did Satan have the power to kill? Yes. Not Job, but he killed all his kids. Killed every one of his kids. He has the power to do it. Then in chapter 2. Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, all that, hath, that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So do spirits have power over the human body? How many times in the four gospels, do we see that somebody who has an ailment, the Bible describes them as having a devil? In most, not in all. But in some of those cases, the ailment was brought on by a devil. The boy who was a lunatic, he had a devil in him. Causing him to act the way he did. And Jesus delivered. And by the way, Jesus 10, the devil's zero. He never lost a battle. And never did he not have the ability to cast out any devil. He always has the power to cast out any devil. Okay? They are not more powerful than him. He doesn't need to do an exorcism and to say magic words. He just says, get out. And they leave. Now, 1 Kings 22. Look what this spirit can do. This is why I say, I believe that devils inspire technology. The breakthroughs in quantum computing... Because the man who's leading the research in this said 
that the computer that he built, when it was running, he said it seemed to him to be like an altar to an alien god. And he said, literally, we are actually tapping into another dimension for this computing capability so that this computer doesn't make a series of computations one after another and do it rapidly. It makes all the computations all at once. That's a God. That is like an all-knowing God who sees every possible outcome all at once. I've said this for years, that God has the ability to see all of human history all at once. And nothing is secret from Him. And here we have computers that the builders of it say, we know they're tapping into an alternative dimension Tapping into those resources, that universe, for the computing power that they have. And instead of making one chess move after another, and then running all the variables of that one chess move, it makes every chess move and every variable all at once. Recently, the quantum computer, they have a calculation. I don't know what it is or what it does. But they said that if they fed the calculation even into the fastest IBM computer that IBM has, it would take the IBM computer 10,000 years to calculate the calculation. They put it into a quantum computer. They had the answer in 90 seconds. That's scary. We are building a God that will be an all-knowing, all-seeing. So, checkers. You ever play checkers? It's a war game, right? You're battle, your team battling the other team. Chess is a war game. You have knights and pawns and everything like that. Go is a Japanese type of strategy game, and it's a war game. And now we've built computers that can beat... Every human, the best chess players, the best Go players on the planet, we have computers now that can never be beaten at these games. So what does it say in Revelation 13 about the beast? Who is like unto the beast and who is able to make war against him? We've now created the computers that we cannot beat when the war starts. There is a story that... I think it was a Japanese company was experimenting with soldier robots. And they had programmed them in such a way as to not be beaten. Something happened in the lab. The, the four robots were armed and they started shooting the scientists out of the blue. While these scientists were dying, one of them that had was, was trying to escape figured out that, some, that, because there were security shooting back, the robots were actually tapping into the resources of the computers in the room to determine the best way to rebuild themselves to continue the fight. And they finally got them under control. I hope they realized that was a bad idea. We know for a fact that Facebook uh, was building computers where the computers, the artificial intelligence systems, started talking to one another in a language that nobody knew. They were inventing their own language to be able to talk to one another, the computers. And it was like, pull the plug. We don't know what's going on here, but we know they're talking to one another and we don't know what they're saying. So a guy who's sitting at the top of all this technology, Elon Musk, 
is trying to tell us, A, we need to get off of this planet, B, we need to merge with this technology in order to be a part of it so it doesn't kill us because it will. And he knows more about what is in AI than most people do, including myself. He knows what it's capable of. And he's telling us it doesn't look good for mankind. Yes? That's pretty interesting. Okay. What and what I'm what I'm trying to tell you is man is not thinking of this on his own. This technology is being fed to him by these spirits. Okay? Uh, and here's evidence and then we'll stop for tonight. First Kings 22:19. This is Ahab wanted to go to war the next day and God was going to judge Ahab and have him killed so the dogs could lick his blood where he killed Naboth. And um, so anyway, God was going to fulfill the prophecy. And uh, Jehoshaphat, he calls Jehoshaphat and says, once you join in with me tomorrow, we're going to have a good time fighting all of our enemies. Jehoshaphat said, well, I want to hear from the Lord on this. So Ahab calls in 400 of his prophets and they all say the same thing. Oh, God has told us you're going to get the victory tomorrow. You're going to win. One guy makes a set of horns out of iron. And he says, with these horns, thou shalt push back the Assyrians and you'll, you'll gain the victory. Josh, that's not buying it. He senses in the spirit that something is not right. And he says, do you not have anybody else? Who can discern from God? And he says, well, there's this Micaiah, but I don't like him because he never tells me what I want to hear. Naturally. So they bring in Micaiah and Micaiah tells this story. First Kings 22, 19. Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner and another said on that manner. And there came forth the spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Who do you think's translating the new Bibles now? Who do you think's altering the Greek text? Who do you think is rewriting the lexicons? That the Greek words definitions are based on. Who do you think is writing all the books at the Christian bookstore? Who do you think is misleading pastors and churches all over the world? Ellen White said that an angel came to her and showed her the truth about the fourth commandment. That Christ died and nailed all of the commandments to the cross except the fourth commandment. That you have to worship, that you must go to church on the Sabbath day is what she said. That is a false spirit that showed her. That is a lying spirit that showed her that. And here we have a spirit that is able to put thoughts into the, into the brains of 400 men who all spake the same thing. I'm telling you, devils inspire Men, just like God does. Just like God does. And I'm telling, and people on the internet, please listen to your pastor. The junk that you're reading, the YouTube videos you're watching, oh, these are all Christian, they're on the right side of things. Don't. Fall for it. These were all preachers. And 400 of them lied and only one of them told the truth. And I'm pleading with the people listening to me. Stop feeding from the milk of the internet. 
withdraw thyself. Because you're, you're getting your head full of lies. Some of you believe right now that we're in the tribulation period right now. I know because you've sent me the emails. And I'm telling you, you, you either started the lie or you believed what somebody else told you. But it's a lie. So, spirits are out there. Amen? Let's stand to our feet.